Welcome to worship. I'm so glad that you're here today. I um, felt like this morning's cold felt a little bit like the reminder to me about winter coming. And um, I thought of uh, the words to one of my favorite hymns, and it's probably one of your favorite hymns too. Um, Summer and winter and springtime and harvest sun, moon, and stars and their courses above join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. And uh, we are coming into a season in which we have opportunities to give thanks and we will be giving thanks today as well. I, I want to uh, let you know that the angel tree which is our opportunity to provide Christmas gifts for uh, children um, whose parents are not able to provide as uh, for them. And they are, um, this is run through the city of Whitehall, I believe. And the tree is right outside the door. There are pink cards for girls and blue cards for boys and it invites you uh, to look at some of the things that they say they want and need and to purchase gifts for them. And there are instructions. If you take an angel tree card, there are instructions on the back that tell you everything you need to do. Be aware that they need to be back to the church no later than noon on Sunday, December 3rd. That's coming up pretty sooner than you think. If you don't feel that you are able to purchase, um, to afford buying gifts for someone, you can do great service by taking the gift cards that they get from other people and being a shopper. So we are helping the city of Whitehall by seeing if we have some people who like to shop. So um, you can help out in that way too, and Lori or Andy Palmer who are organizing this can um, say more about that. Uh, we have Advent coming upon us soon, which means that next Sunday, which is the last Sunday before Advent begins, in the afternoon, we'll be hanging the greens, putting up the Christmas tree here in the sanctuary with the Christmas decorations. Everyone is invited to participate. There will be things that are easy to do and things that are harder to do and um, it is actually a very fun occasion. And um, Advent devotional books will be available next week. And um, in December 3rd, a new Advent Sunday School class will start with Cheryl Enders teaching adults, uh, Christmas is not your birthday. And um, also there'll be an Advent study on Wednesday evenings led by Mike Maroos. So those things are coming up and I invite you to just Stay alert and check the bulletin for details. And finally, I want to invite you, if you have not filled out um, a vision questionnaire uh, that invites your feedback about your ideas for the future of the church, you have three more days to do that. And the link is in the e-newsletter that you received this week. If you can't find it that way, call the church office tomorrow or Tuesday, and we can help you with that. All that being said, I invite you uh, to center our hearts and minds and this um, worship of God through the ministry of music and welcoming back uh, Bert Adams with us today.
Would you uh, rise, please, and join me in the call to worship? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. God, we delight in your creation. We thank you for soft breezes, crisp apples, changing seasons that remind us of your presence and provision. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. God, we delight in our connectedness. We thank you for friends who check in, for church family who lifts one another up, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. God, we delight in your presence, dwells among us. We give thanks for neighbors who offer help in times of trouble, gentleness in the midst of pain, and acts of kindness during seasons of struggle. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving and rejoicing. Come, let us worship God together. Amen. Stay standing and we'll re uh, join our hearts together in Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart, number 160. and hear these words from the fourth book of Philippians, verses 4 to 13. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard <clears throat> and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And let us say together, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We will now turn our hearts to our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, which is known to many, but you will find it in the rear of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. For several months, I have been um, hoping to offer a prayer by Thea Maloney from her book of prayers called Theology. Works really well, doesn't it? <laughs> and um, these prayers are um, thematic. So it didn't click with the week of the theme that was going on in worship. So middle of the week, I thought, I'm gonna try this again. And I found a prayer about Thanksgiving, for Thanksgiving. And then I was delighted to remember and to see in the bulletin that um, Brenda and Jerry offered flowers in Thea's um, memory and honor um, of her 25 years in retirement that she served this church. And it was just six years today that she suffered the stroke. And uh, <clears throat> she had immediately become my role model when I met her, but now she's my role model in uh, retirement, which is going to be hard shoes to fill. But join with me as we worship with our morning prayer and remember our dear, dear friend, Thea. Let us pray. Gracious God, Lord and Savior, King of all creation, we gather together on this special day of Thanksgiving to give praise and to lift our hearts and voices in songs of celebration and joy. We come to you, almighty, loving, and compassionate God, in these precious moments of prayer, to worship you in the beauty of holiness, to celebrate the beauty and bounty of your creation, the grace of your forgiveness and your salvation. We are joyful in the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We are constantly in awe at the wonders, the mystery, the amazing ways in which you reveal yourself to us. 
We search for you and find you through the Holy Scriptures, through your Son, Jesus the Christ, through the symbols of sac sanctuary and sacrament, scenes of nature, through events, through dreams, through answered prayer, through music and the arts, through each other. In this sacred time, we pray for those who have special needs, all the many people we hold dear and are listed in our bulletin, in our concerns, in our hearts, and all the many of whom we know nothing, though they are enfolded in your great heart of love. In our lives, in our community, in our church, our nation, our world, there is so much pain and struggle, distress and despair, so much we feel powerless to change. Help us, we pray, to open our minds and hearts to the sense of your presence, always ready to bring us hope and health, courage and comfort, calm in the midst of chaos, understanding and forgiveness, pardon and peace. <coughs> because of your great mercy, love and power, we know that we can place our trust in your goodness, place our often, so often discouraged souls in your hands, and using the energy and life you have given us, we can be about some significant task which benefits others. Dear Lord and Savior, you are our shepherd, the king of love, whose goodness faileth never. Help us, dear Lord, to commit our ways unto you, for you are the source and the reason for the beautiful melody of grace and generosity that undergirds our very existence and enables us again and again to vocalize our songs of thanksgiving, praise, and joy. Gracious God, help us to live each day in a sacred walk with you, that we may draw even closer to our Savior Jesus and in his company become more and more Christ-like day by day. Hear us now in our silent prayer from the depths of our hearts. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now I invite you to stand up and welcome each other in the name of Jesus Christ. I turn around and there are the children. One, two, three, four. How are you, Noah? Good. Who else is here? <laughs> Jeffrey and oh, Paige and Miss Madeline. Well, let's say our favorite Bible verse. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So, in four days, it's going to be Thanksgiving. Right? Not Christmas. Thanksgiving comes first. Yeah. So, um, let's see. On Thanksgiving, there's no school, right? And do you get up and watch that parade on TV with the big balloons that are the size of this room? Do you ever watch that? It's the Macy's Day Parade. Just get up, it's eight, nine o'clock in your pajamas, and watch the parade, because I'll be watching too. And then, after that, you have to get dressed, because you're probably going to go somewhere for Thanksgiving, or people are coming to your house for Thanksgiving. Yeah, we don't know. And they're going to come to your house? Okay. So, then you have that big dinner, right? And do you um, go around the table and say something you're thankful for? Do you? Okay, well, if you don't, you might want to try that this year. And I'm, I'm sure that your guests, and your grandma especially, will be so happy to have you do that. And then you eat turkey stuffing. You don't have turkey? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, how about cranberry sauce? Green bean, okay, green bean casserole. Uh, pumpkin pie. Yes? Yes. On your birthday. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, then after that, you're like really tired and you probably take a nap, right? Nah. Some people watch football. Do you watch football? You watch football. Okay. You do watch football. Okay. But then sometimes you might go out and play, or maybe uh, later in the day you watch a movie together and then go to bed. Well, here's, a, here's an idea that I have. I think that we should have Thanksgiving every day for the rest of our lives, all right? Well, 
that's true, it wouldn't be special, but it's a, it's a great idea, listen to this. So the day after Thanksgiving this week, on Friday, no school, get up and watch the parade, because it'll be on TV again, and then get dressed, go to visit grandma, or grandma comes to visit you, and then have that big dinner, you know, say what you're thankful for, and then eat turkey, la 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 la, and cranberry sauce, and pumpkin pie, and then watch football, or play outside, or then watch a movie, and then go to sleep. Hold on, wait. And then the next day, which would be Saturday, guess what would happen? It's the weekend. You, the weekend, yeah, but no, no, it's the Thanksgiving every day. So you wake up, and you run, oh wait, no school, no school. And then you go in your pajamas and watch that movie, because it would be on TV again the third day in a row. And then you get dressed, and you go to grandma's, or grandma comes to you, and then you get, sit down to the table for your Thanksgiving dinner, and you say one thing you're thankful for, and then you eat turkey. <laughs> turkey and mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes and cranberry sauce and, what did I forget, pumpkin pie. And then you're so full, you take a nap, or watch TV, or watch football, or do both. And then, you, later in the day, you might, okay, watch a movie, okay, and eat corn. That's another one. And watch, flip, uh, wait, watch a movie, and go to sleep. So, my idea is to have Thanksgiving every day for the rest of your life. Don't you think that's a great idea? I mean, think about a page. Every day you wake up, there's no school. You watch this wild, crazy parade on TV, and then you get dressed and go to grandma's, and then you don't think you want to have it. Do, do, you don't want turkey every day of your life, the rest of your life? Oh, come on. Okay, what? You barely like turkey. Okay, so this probably is a bad idea. Who thinks it's a bad idea? Raise your hand. Oh, you can say, no, you can raise your hand. Lots of people do that. It's okay. Yes, bad idea. Okay, I have a better idea. How about if every day you get up and you thank God for a great night's sleep and for a new day of life, and maybe at school you say thank you for your food before you have lunch, and then maybe before you go to sleep, you thank God for a fabulous day at school or that your soccer team won or you won, good. Yes. Well, that's great. He did. Oh. Okay. But here we go. So there wouldn't be turkey every day. Is that all right? No. There wouldn't be no turkey every day. But here's a little book that I want you to take. And I want you to start a gratitude journal. That sounds really important, doesn't it? But inside here, Jeffrey, inside this book are... Um, lines, paper, you can draw pictures or you could write a list of one thing every day that you want to thank God for. I think that's much better than having turkey every day. What do you think? Yes? Okay. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Thanksgiving. Help us to be thankful every day. In your son's name we pray. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite the ushers uh, to come forward to receive our tithes and offerings.
Lord of peace and serenity, receive the gifts we bring this day as, a, as we present them in thankfulness with joy. We bring ourselves as our offering, that in living lives of truth and justice, honor and excellence, we might please you and be worthy of your never-ending love and presence with us. Grateful that Christ and the Holy Spirit might dwell in us, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As I read the scripture from Matthew 25, Jesus' <clears throat> parable, sometimes called the parable of the um, treasure, sometimes called the parable of the talents in Luke's version, um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to join with me in reading part of it. Uh, when I point to you, you're going to say this, and let's practice it one time. Well done, you are a good and faithful servant. Okay. So Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who was leaving on a trip. He called his servants and handed his possessions over to them. To one he gave five valuable coins, and to another he gave two and to another he gave one. He gave to each servant according to that servant's ability, and then he left on his journey. After the man left, the servant who had five valuable coins took them and went to work doing business with them. He gained five more. In the same way, the one who had two valuable coins gained two more, but the servant who had received the one valuable coin dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five valuable coins came forward with five additional coins. He said, Master, you gave me five valuable coins. Look, I've gained five more. His master replied, Well done! You are a good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I'll put you in charge of much. Come, celebrate with me. The second servant also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two valuable coins. Look, I've gained two more. His master replied, Well done. You are a good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I'll put you in charge of much. Come, celebrate with me. Now the one who had received one valuable coin came and said, Master, I knew that you were a hard man. You harvest grain where you haven't sown. You gather crops where you haven't spread seed. So I was afraid, and I hid my valuable coin in the ground. Here, you have what's yours. His master replied, you evil and lazy servant. You knew that I harvest grain where I haven't sown and that I gather crops where I haven't spread seed. In that case, you should have returned my money over to the bankers so that when I returned, you could give me what belonged to me with interest. Therefore, take from him the valuable coin and give it to the one who has 10 coins. Those who have much will receive more and they will have more than they need. But as for those who don't have much, even the little bit they have will be taken away from them. Now take the worthless servant and throw him out into the farthest darkness. People there will be weeping and grinding their teeth. Let's pray. Dear God, may the words of Jesus plant a seed of truth in our hearts. May we allow it to set down roots there by faith and may it plant seeds that flourish into the fruit of deeds in our lives, deeds that please you. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Well, I um, love the scripture that Cheryl read to us about rejoicing and being thankful, and especially I love the admonition 
to think about whatever is praiseworthy and to be thankful. So I've been thinking uh, this week about being thankful and, um, and also about being good stewards as we're encouraged to be in the parable that I just shared. And um, I wanna show you a couple pictures. First, uh, some of the artwork that has been done about the, about the, whoops, gotta turn that on first. Here we have a, a depiction of the parable of the talents. Um, Kyle, I think I might have turned that screen off. Let me turn on that. It's not on down here for the choir. For the choir who's so important. There we go. There we go. It's coming. I want to include everybody. Thank you. This is uh, from Cameroon. It's a picture of the master distributing the coins uh, to the three people. And you can see their bags that they have there. And you see the one person standing off to the side with his one bag, looking kind of defensive and uh, not happy already, having been given the bag to take care of. This is uh, done by a religious community in Cameroon. They have a wonderful way of doing artwork. They put on costumes and act out the teen scenes of the teachings of Jesus. Someone takes a photo of them in their poses, and then artists paint the picture. And they've done this through so much of the scriptures. Here is a woodcut, um, a modern woodcut of the parable of the talents. And we can see uh, two people getting their gifts and um, the one person in the background, I can't tell that they're either being, they're experiencing the being cast out, which I think is the case, or it also kind of looks like they're burying their treasure in the ground. I'm not quite sure. This next one is um, a much older interpretation, and this is uh, portraying the accounts coming due. The master's return from his trip. You see his uh, suitcases put aside there in the corner, and he's come to collect. And he, uh, you can't see too well, but he's angry because this gentleman is just returning the one buried talent. Here I'm giving you a little bit of a close-up of their faces. You can see the furrowed brow and the intense probing look and uh, the, the bowed kind of posture of the person returning one coin. And this is actually a, a, a portion of a pane of stained glass uh, in a cathedral in Corf, England. Um, he hid his Lord's money. And you can see the look on his face of uh, feeling pretty dejected, downcast. Perhaps he felt that because he only had been given one coin or one bag of coins, that he was not considered valuable. This is a, um, from the 14th century. This is a, <clears throat> a, manu uh, a drawing that's in a manuscript uh, and uh, it's currently in Germany. And I'm gonna show you some of the up close. There's the part at the bottom where you see the king is given gifts to the two people who have um, returned and he's returned them more gifts 
and then the third person is kind of in chains. And it doesn't say in the scripture that he's put into chains, so we can only imagine that the writer was trying to show that the person has kind of chained himself in his uh, own fears and lack of trust in the stewardship he was entrusted with. And then here's an up close of the top part of that. There's kind of a the sort of truth, I think, the judge, day of judgment. There are the um, people who have been good stewards and then there are the people who are weeping and gnashing their teeth, which I think are signs of, of uh, anxiety and discontent. So as I was thinking about uh, both of these scriptures, and I've been thinking, uh, because of our visioning process and other things, I've been thinking about the church and making my own sense of thanksgivings about this community of faith. And I, I kind of uh, thought about them in, in uh, random order. I just kept thinking of more and more thanksgivings that I have. And so I'm going to share them with you because um, I think the parable that Jesus taught in Matthew where someone gives coins uh, and trusts to his servants these coins uh, in his absence. In Luke's gospel, it calls them talents. That was a way that um, the coins were named but that suggests to us that Jesus really is not just talking about what people do with their money, but with all of their resources. Um, when I was in Marion, we uh, had opportunity for, to lead uh, a series of workshops with many different people that were 15 weeks um, called Getting Ahead in a Just Getting By World, and it was um, and designed to help people who were kind of stuck in, in intergenerational poverty, kind of break the cycle. It was based on uh, a workbook that was put together by a, a disciple of Ruby Payne's, um, Phil Duvall. And um, one of the exercises in that 15-week study was uh, examining all of the different kinds of resources that contribute to stability in a person's life. Um, it's easy to think about people uh, being in poverty because they don't have money. Um, but money is only one of the resources that contributes to a stable life. Um, there are many other important resources, not just money, but health, uh, access to education, ability to learn new things. There's uh, social and emotional um, stability, emotional wellness. There's connections with other people, relationships, kind of what we call social capital. There are the presence of role models in one's life who help a person know how to get ahead and function in different settings. There's one's own spiritual wellness. And um, I think the parable of the, of the coins or the talents is about believing that what we have, what all of our resources are, are entrusted to us by God who wants to partner with us and bless us, bring us joy in using them. Um, I wish more of the pictures had focused on the joy of the people using their gifts. And as I was thinking about this congregation, that's what I was thinking about. I'm thankful about so many things. Let me just share some. I'm really thankful uh, for parents who encourage their children and their youth, or grandparents who encourage their children and their youth to get to know God, who encourage their children and youth to learn the joy of serving and being a disciple. I was thinking of uh, the Fox family that goes together to serve the breakfast at, friends, at, at the Church for All People. And whereas uh, she 
they normally have difficulty sometimes getting the kids to come to church on the Sundays when they're going to serve breakfast at the church for all people they eagerly get up to go because they are having the joy of serving and they're meeting new people and finding out what it means to be an ambassador for Jesus. I am grateful for all of the many people who find that this is a caring congregation and work on building up caring relationships within the congregation. People who look after each other. I'm grateful for people who look to find someone that they normally see there and call them and ask how they're doing. I'm grateful for the people who are part of Stephen Ministry to offer extra help to people who are struggling, for the people who are in the prayer group, who regularly pray for the needs of the people in this congregation and for those that, whose burdens they are carrying. I'm grateful for the people who are in the prayer chain, who will pray whenever they get a text um, talking about a prayer need. I'm grateful for the Shalom visitors who call and check and sometimes visit persons in our congregation who are homebound. I am grateful to all of the people who take the prayers uh, that are in the bulletin and now that are in our e-newsletter and online and take it seriously to pray for the church. I'm grateful for the people who care about making worship happen, for the cameramen uh, who make it possible for viewers who are not here to be part of the worship service, for people who provide flowers for the altar that we have um, lovely memories to celebrate and a beautiful, beautiful visual focal point, for the people who come to help decorate the church for Advent, for the people who regularly prepare the elements of communion and help serve them. I'm grateful for the people who lead us in praising God, who come and practice so that you can sing and lift us into a spirit of worship, and for our musicians who practice and make this all happen. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the young people who have invited their friends to church. Do you know that Carl Acton and Emily Beach have been working on their friends to get them here, and they've been successful some of the time. And I'm grateful for anyone who's reaching out to someone else to invite them to church. I am grateful for my mentors here in this congregation, for Cheryl Enders and Tom Slack, who are retired as ministers officially but who are continuing to give their significant gifts of pastoral leadership and care and who have been supportive and encouraging for me. Very grateful for them. I'm grateful for people who walk with others during times of difficulty, for the times when you call and check on each other and listen to one another. I'm grateful for people who stretch themselves to take on leadership kind of thinking, maybe I'm not up to this, but I'll step out because someone's got to do it. I'm thankful for our lay leader who has done so much of that. I'm thankful for people who want to study the scriptures, people who read devotions on their own for the men's prayer breakfast that reads the, um, the uh, upper room together and prays for one another. I'm thankful for the people who lead those small groups of people who are caring for one another. I think about Matt Epen and all of the work that he does to shepherd a group of men. I'm grateful for people who do simple but time and take intensive things like baking cookies regularly and making casseroles because they're interested in being hospitable and making the church a place where people can feel welcomed. For the people who come and serve youth lunch and talk to the youth. For the people who care about helping children and youth know Jesus by teaching Sunday school, working in the nursery, going on retreats, 
coming and joining in with the youth group, providing children's moments. It's so important. Everyone's gifts are important. I'm grateful for everyone who comes home from work and just barely gets relaxed when they come out to come to a committee meeting because they want to help guide the decisions of the church. I'm grateful for all the people who participated in the vision process, who are engaged in thinking about their hopes and dreams for what the church can be. I'm grateful for people who care about the ministry of hospitality by going out into the parking lot to welcome people on Sunday morning, by being a greeter, by being an usher, by trying to make sure you speak with people here that you haven't met before. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the people who are specifically giving regularly, for the people who pledge, no matter what the amount is, for the people who invest their faith and their gifts in the importance of the church and its ministries. I'm grateful for people who work on our compassionate ministries, for people who are marginalized, for the offerings that we take up for special needs, and for people who give to things like Angel Tree. I know we've been through a lot. These have been hard years in many ways. But as I started thinking about all of the giving that people do, you are wonderful. Where's that slide we need? Well done. You are good and faithful servants. Well done. Uh, Tom and or, uh, Bill and Phyllis Coleman are here today, I see. But let me just give a special shout out to them. The beauty of these church grounds are in large part due to their loving care over many years. Phyllis tells the story of uh, she was here, I think, several decades ago for a wedding and noticed that there were weeds in one of the beds down at the, the base of the entrance where people go out for the wedding ceremony. And, and she thought, I wouldn't want that to be the case for anybody's wedding that I had. And she and Bill decided they would start taking care of the church gardens. You would not believe how much time and effort they put into that. Uh, the geranium flower bed in front of the church <coughs> sign is propagated each year from cuttings that Phyllis has saved from geraniums that were given when her daughter-in-law died fairly young of cancer. And she continues to make those geraniums live by being part of the, the, in front of the church signs. Bill digs up a whole huge line of, I think they're called Peruvian daisies every year, takes out all the bulbs, takes them to his house, drives his car over the stems for some reason to crush them, dries out the bulbs, stores them individually, and brings them back the next year. And they are, well, I think they're senior citizens, for sure. Because they are giving of the gifts that they have, the talents they have, and they're offering them to God. I think the problem with the person with the one talent was that he did not understand that it doesn't matter how much of our, our gifts are as compared to other people. All of our abilities, our talents, our resources are entrusted to us and they're all valuable. You can look at this building and I've heard people say, well, I don't know how my giving makes a difference to this. I, I can't have an impact. The impact that we all have is in our willingness 
to act on what we have for God's purposes. I celebrate the people who reach out, not during church activities, but in compassion to the community through giving blood and volunteering with other organizations. That is to be celebrated too. Sometimes people act from specific gifts they have, and sometimes they act just in general ways, like being able to bake cookies. I want to give a shout out to Lori Reeves, who is a retired teacher, and as a preschool teacher, uses the relationship she has with students. They, having had Miss Lori for their class, shapes the whole way they think about this church and coming to church. And when they come to VBS, which they come from Miss Lori's classes far more than anybody else, they look for her and they are so excited to see her. She's her own Pied Piper of this congregation. And I'm grateful. It makes a difference. Well done. I could tell stories about every person in here and I would be glad to next year. But let's celebrate and go to Thanksgiving table this year, taking time to try what I did. Make a little list of all the things that you could be grateful for. You'll be amazed. It could go on and on and on. That little book you gave the kids, it's not big enough. Thanks be to God. go forth from this place rejoicing in the goodness of God, giving thanks for his ever-present care with you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his presence upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.